Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to the channel. It's 2021 now, and people are getting back to playing gigs after this entire weird moment that we've had globally for the last year and a half or so. A lot of us have our vaccination shots, and many of us are getting back into the full swing of gigging again. If not already, then definitely coming up soon. So I figured it would be a good opportunity to launch off into another one of my little mini-series here and share some of my tips for playing gigs effectively. And this is most certainly going to be more of a do-as-I-say-and-not-as-I-do kind of situation because I have played a lot of bad gigs during my career as a musician, and I have definitely learned a lot more from the failures than I have from the successes. So if you're newer to this stuff, or you can't figure out why you're annoying everybody at every single gig that you go to, then maybe this would be a good place to start for you to learn some of the etiquette and the ins and outs of how to act and what to do while you're at the gig and while you're doing the sound check and the performance, interacting with the audience, all of that. There's going to be quite a lot to share, so I'm going to break this up over many, many videos. Okay, let's do this. My first tip is to show up early. Ideally, you should be showing up right at the start of the gig, before any of the sound check has happened, before any of the bands have loaded in, way before they're opening the doors and allowing people to come inside. This will let the show promoters and the venue owners and anyone else official know that you're taking this seriously and you can behave business-like and show up on time, all of that. Treat it like you're showing up to your job. Treat it like you're a professional, and people will love to see that. Also, encourage all of your band members and crew members to do the same. If there's only one member of the band who is taking things seriously and the other people involved in the project are just kind of along for the ride and partying and goofing off, then that doesn't really paint a great picture for your group either. Now, I know a lot of people have busy lives and schedules and trying to balance a job and a home life along with gigging and fitting in other stuff too is really hard. So, I mean, maybe you don't always have a full six hours on a weekend to dedicate to playing this gig. Maybe half of your band gets off work at 9 p.m. and the show is already going to be in full swing by then, but you have a few members show up to the venue early and make sure that everybody knows that you're going to be there and you're going to be on time and maybe have all the gear ready to go. That way the other band members who are late can roll in when they can get to the show and it won't be an issue for anybody. What we absolutely do not like to see is that band who only shows up 30 minutes before it's their turn to go on stage. All of their fans and followers only show up for their set. They set up their stuff and they play their gig and then they're gone 10 minutes later and everybody they brought with them leaves too. So it's just not great for showing support for the other artists or the people who put on an event and it's not great for making you and your band look like a team player that people are going to want to book again in the future. Which brings us to my next point. You should be trying to support all of the other artists who are performing on the same night at the same event as you. Even if they aren't the most amazing, talented band that you've ever heard, still give them some words of encouragement afterward. Be like, that was an excellent performance and I see a lot of potential. I would say actually especially if they seem like they're a newer group or if they're having a hard time up there on stage, that's especially when they need those extra words of encouragement because you don't want to have their first gig turn out to be a terrible experience and then they decide that that was enough and then they never want to touch music again. I know that I certainly don't want to encourage other musicians to quit playing music because everybody else at the gig was being an ass. I know for a lot of people it's hard to stay put for, you know, this, the entire six hour or so span that a show lasts and catch every single moment of every single band. I like to support my musician friends as much like this as I possibly can. But you know, stuff happens and you're in a gig party setting and people are going to want to talk to you and you know, maybe you're going to go outside and drink some beers in the alleyway or something like that, whatever. But if you're going to do it like that, then at least try to be popping back inside to the stage area and at least make sure you're catching a good 5, 10, 15 minutes of every band that plays. And it's going to be worth it and it's going to be great for your networking and it's also going to be great for discovering awesome new music in your area that you like to listen to. So there you go. Don't be in it just for the party vibe and the party atmosphere. People are up here to share their art, to share their music with you, and you should stick around and enjoy it. Next point is tuner pedals for everyone. 
I mean, anyone who is applicable. Obviously, your drummer and your singer aren't going to need a tuner pedal. But everybody else in the band who's playing guitars, absolutely. So my tuner pedal is from Boss, and I bought this thing like 15 years ago or something like that. So it's probably a little bit dirty and banged up. But once you click the button on stage, it will kill your guitar signal. No sound will come out of this until you are done tuning your instrument, which is probably the most useful thing that you can have during a gig. Not only does that eliminate the three amateurs trying to tune their guitars by ear while the audience waits, that's a terrible moment to be in for everybody involved, but also for any other reason that you need to make all of your gear quiet on stage with just the click of one button on a foot switch, tuner pedals are also very useful. So your set changeover time is very important. The people who booked you the gig made a very tight schedule in which they have enough time for everybody to showcase their music and probably only like a 5, 10, maybe 15 minute changeover in between acts. Depending on whether you're dealing with, you know, full bands or solo acts or rappers, the changeover time between sets will be different depending on your event. But it's a short window of time when you need to get your stuff out of there and the next act needs to get set up. And I see it all the time when people just get done playing and then half the band wanders outside to go and smoke a cigarette and then somebody else goes and starts talking and gets in a long conversation with someone and then there's like one or two band members left over that are like, where the heck did everybody else go? And now we have to try to get all this gear off stage by ourselves, right? So stay focused. I know you just got done performing your heart out and you're tired and you're exhausted and you're hyped up and people thought it was awesome so people can't wait to come and talk to you afterward, but, but do not bungle this set changeover time because it's probably one of the most amateur things that you can possibly do at a gig. There's one last point here before I go, and it kind of ties into the last thing too, but drum sets are pretty complicated and they take some time to set up and they take some time to tear down. So you want to make sure that you have your drum set, if you have one, staged and ready to go before it's your turn to get up onto the stage. So that's like cymbal stands are assembled. You know, you put the two tom-toms on top of the kick drum, put hook up the kick pedal and all that. Anything you can do to make it ready. So all you have to do is just carry stuff onto the stage and go. And in the reverse, once your set is done, you don't want to do any of that breaking down the drum kit kind of work while you're on stage and while the next act is waiting to put their stuff on the stage. So you just take all of your stuff off of the stage before you disassemble anything. So that is all for this time. Hopefully it was useful for you. It was kind of nice just to get some of my pet peeves off my chest too. And hopefully together we can make a better gigging environment for everybody involved in the process. There will be another installments of this before too long, so keep your eyes peeled. I would suggest subscribing with notifications so you know every time I upload a video. And we're done. Have fun out there.